This is just a nice short video for the dot point. Analyze information from secondary sources to identify the products extracted from donated blood and discuss the uses of these products. We'll be having a guest speaker from the Red Cross coming in to talk to us about the uh, donation process that they go through and the different things that the blood that people donate is used for. So this flowchart that you'll have in your booklet shows how we get from whole blood donations through to some of the many different uh, substances that they can extract from whole blood in order to provide different things to a wide range of patients. You may have heard the uh, saying that one blood donation or one person's donation can help up to three people. Uh, that's because depending on the donation that you make will depend on whether they can break it down into these individual components and also depends on the uh, demand that they have at the time for different products, whether they'll use it as a whole blood donation or they'll use it as a, um, a part donation. So when you go to the donation centre, they uh, will usually take a whole blood sample. Sometimes you can just donate plasma. Sorry, you can donate plasma more often than you can whole blood. And our guest speaker will talk a bit more about that uh, on Friday. So when a patient uh, is in a situation where they've lost a lot of blood, usually as a result of trauma, things like car accidents or um, injuries where they've uh, damaged arteries in particular, they've lost a lot of blood. Whole blood can be given in order to increase the blood volume level quite quickly. Plasma, as we know, is the watery fluid within the blood. This can help to increase the blood proteins because of the proteins that are dissolved within the plasma, as well as a few other things that we'll look at further. Uh, Anti-D is a substance that you can get out of a whole blood donation that can be given to newborns to prevent a disease called rhesus disease. Normal immuno immunoglobulin helps to prevent hepatitis A. So patients who are susceptible to hepatitis A can be given this in order to help uh, prevent the disease. Hyperimmunoglobulin helps to protect against viral diseases such as chickenpox and tetanus. So these are given to patients with low immune systems. So their immune response isn't able to fight off these viruses themselves, so they're able to be given these substances in order to give them a bit of a hand. Platelets, they're the tiny little cell fragments within our blood which help to clot. So if a patient has a disease such as haemophilia, which uh, stops them from being able to clot or they stops their blood, sorry, from being able to clot properly, they can be given an um, infusion of platelets especially if they're in a situation, again, where trauma has occurred and there's excess bleeding, the platelets will help to clot the blood and therefore stop the bleeding and um, hopefully return the patient back to normal. Red blood cells, we know their main job is to carry oxygen. So if a patient is uh, suffering from low oxygen levels, they can have a, a red blood cell transfusion in order to help up or boost the oxygen carrying capacity of their blood. White blood cells we know are able to help in fight infection. So again, people with um, compromised immune systems can be given white blood cells in order to be able to uh, fight infections. Intragram, not to be mistaken with Instagram, helps to boost the immune system after bone marrow transplant. So patients who are undergoing uh, this procedure of um, bone marrow transplants are already suffering a great deal. So the um, infusion of the intragram just helps to give their immune system a bit of a backup um, to stop them from getting infections that they're susceptible to. And lastly, cryoprecipitate contains clotting factors that are used in the case of massive bleeding. So as we can see, quite a few of these things are used uh, when patients have lost a lot of blood in order to keep the blood volume high. If the blood volume drops, we have a whole heap of other things that um, can result so the organs and things aren't getting enough oxygen as we know uh, they require they require certain amounts of oxygen in order for cellular respiration to take place also it can um, play havoc with our kidneys and things like that so maintaining our blood volume is just as essential as maintaining all of these other things so during our guest speaker talk uh, on friday they will be talking about a few of these things 
how they help and also going through the process of what happens when you make a donation and then where does that blood go? How does that blood help people? And uh, we hope that you find it very interesting and consider donating blood in the future. And that's all for today's video.